My math teacher always tells me this joke. He says that us from the Swiss school, we don't only speak three languages, English, Portuguese, French, or German. We speak four, because math, according to him, is also a language. So that made me wonder, can math actually be considered a language? So by definition, math is a form of communication uh, written or orally used by a community. And if we take, for example, English, of course, it obviously fits in into all this description. I mean, it is written, it is used by a community, a lot of them actually all around the world. But if we take math, for example, I mean, it is written, but it can also be orally spoken, and it is used by a community, in this case, the whole world. So by definition, I say, I'd say that yes, math can be considered a language. But now, let's talk a bit more about language and let's see where it came from, its history, how did it appear. So, uh, language has been developing with humans since a long, long time. Since archaic human beings, they actually used to communicate by grunts, so they used to grunt to each other in a way to try to speak, or they would used to use sign language. And then that developed into the language that we know nowadays. So then you might be wondering, if we all started from the same grunts, from the same sign type of sign language, then why don't we speak the same language in the whole world? Well, that's because uh, back then they actually used to live in small groups. And these small groups would later on separate and immigrate all around the world. And then, as they went in, for example, a warmer place, they would change their habits because they'd have to eat differently, the weather would be differently, so their behavior along the day would be so much different. And then the language would adapt to how they lived every single day. But we also have to consider other more recent historical facts. For example, how England was such, uh, was such a powerful country and how it conquered so many others all around the world. That has such a great influence on why English is so spoken nowadays, why so many countries speak English, and why it is the so-called universal language. We also, another example is Brazil. I mean, we were conquered by Portugal, and that is why we speak Portuguese. But our Portuguese is completely different from theirs. And that's because uh, we, the language adapted to our culture, it adapted into how we live every single day. And so the language was adapted, and the Brazilian Portuguese became the Brazilian Portuguese. So we can compare this to math, because math actually, be, actually has been, was being, being used since archaic human beings, just like language. They actually already has the, had this notion of number back then. So for example, as the seasons change, they would see that, for example, the leaves would fall down, and they would write down a mark in their cave to represent each season that passed. So they had this notion of number. And uh, the same thing happened with the small groups all around the world that immigrated. But even though that happened, language appeared in every single one of, uh, math appeared in every single one of these places even though it was expressed differently. So for example, in ancient Rome, we all know the X's, V's, and I's that they used to express numbers. The Babylonians, for example, as you can see, the, they used these Y's to represent their numbers, one on top of each other. And then the ancient Egyptians, they actually got household, normal households, household items to represent their numbers. So for example, a cord of rope uh, enveloped in itself was represented by the number 100. So in each of these places, just like language, a math uh, came to existence and it, it developed according to the culture of the country, just like language. But of course, uh, both of these things became more sophisticated, so language became much more sophisticated. We have a whole range of vocabulary and just like math, that then, uh, that then created subtraction, addition, division to represent currency and architecture. And so both of these things together, they uh, developed throughout time and they became more sophisticated. And we can see that historically they're both quite similar. So now that I've told you guys about its history and how they came from the same, they came from the same point, 
I like to talk about how orally and symbolically and in our day-to-day -day lives they are similar too. So math, actually, we use it, for example, if we go to the supermarket or we're talking taxes, we use math to communicate. Or, for example, if we want to go buy a new wardrobe and we have to measure the dimensions and we have to tell the person the dimensions, we're talking math. We can also actually translate math. For example, equals, it is a symbol, this symbol that we all know in math, and translated into words in English, it's equals. This symbol is less than, and this one, greater than. So it can actually be translated just like any other language can. Of course, there are a number of, of, a number of exceptions. For example, we can't express our feelings or our emotions by math, uh, which is a basic human need. We need to express our feelings. But still, it can still be considered a form of communication. We can communicate rationally. So another concrete example which I find very interesting is that scientists have experimenting this new way to try to communicate with other possible living beings in other worlds. So what they did was send a spacecraft into the universe and in it there was inscripted a message in math uh, to see if they responded. So according to them, they did this because if humans manage to, if humans manage to discover, this discover this logical language, then maybe other living beings also did. For now, we haven't gotten a reply, but maybe one day. <laughs> so I told you guys all of these facts and all of these researches, but I think I can also talk uh, pers about my personal experience. I've actually have lived a year abroad in France and while I was there, even though I could speak French, I wasn't fluent like all the other kids. So the class that I identified with the most, the language that I understood the most was math because the language was m so similar to the one in Brazil. So yes, I would have to say my math teacher, I would have to say that I agree with my math teacher that math is a language. Thank you.